Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. And very firstly, I do want to tell you guys all my life updates at the back half of today's episode. Also, very quickly as well, CSK News will restart up next week. This is going to be the last episode for four to five days. I do have pre-recorded videos for all of you, which I hope you all enjoy. So I'll see you guys all here next week for CSK News is going to start back up. We'll be on time with stories. But thank you all for watching, guys. I'm officially moving to Vegas. I have my apartment figured out and everything. But the next few days of videos will actually show you guys more details about that. Let's hop into our first story, though. Some big stories out there, the first of which FaZe Clan's very own Olaf Meister is apparently set not to return to FaZe Clan, at least not anytime soon. Now, Kerrigan came out in an interview with HLTV. I'll link the interview down below if you guys actually look at that interview and what he said exactly to HLTV. Uh, apparently, two stories coming from him. The first of which is they are not sure if Olaf Meister is actually set to return anytime soon. The second of which he does say yes, the team is looking into a permanent replacement or maybe a temporary replacement for him on that roster. Now, of course, we had ECS finals last weekend and Croman from Heroic, he was actually a stand in for FaZe Clan. After his short stint with Heroic, he played very well there and his first few weekends or his first few days with FaZe Clan didn't go as to plan. They still placed top four but at ECS finals they were expected to probably do a bit better if they did have Olaf Meister or maybe exist on that roster and Chroman did not perform maybe to his high points as well but again that's his first few days with the team so we're looking forward for ESL Bela Horizonte. That tournament should start tomorrow guys. Look out for that. FaZe Clan is probably going to be your favorite team there alongside Mouse Sports. Mouse Sports though will not have Oscar. They'll actually have nothing formerly of Cloud9 filling in for that roster so it does seem even with Croman, we're going to assume he's going to be their stand-in player for ESL Bela Horizonte unless the team announces a new stand-in player. He should be there for them and they probably will be the favorite for that event but more importantly going forward it does seem for now due to personal reasons, undisclosed reasons, Olaf Meister is not set to return to FaZe Clan anytime soon. That was in huge news guys. We'll see when he does come back. If he does come back to FaZe Clan and if he doesn't that would be astronomical news. So moving on on top of that as well we do other news out there revolving around of course OP skins. Now I'm sure many of you guys are aware about OP skins skins being soon shut down on the 21st of June. This is actually my first warning to all of you guys. They've actually have stopped deposits to the website for the time being and of course we're going to be permanently stopping those deposits for CSGO skins. So for all of you guys who still have inventory or as well as money on the website, I do suggest to you guys not for the money part, the wallet wise, the wallet should still be there the 21st but withdraw your items as of right now. They might not be there when you get back if you do go on vacation across the 21st. No one really fully sure what's going to happen but it's very likely any items in your inventory and OP skins, those steam bots will be banned or shut down or even if they're going to be at the very very least going to be put on severe trade hold so any items you guys have on there are subject to be deleted forever so we're going to see what happens with that no one's sure on the exact details of what Valve's going to do to all those OP skins trading bots so we'll see exactly what happens when the time comes I will have a special video for all of you guys on the 20th one last reminder to all of you guys to withdraw all your OP skins items and the future of which I have some details for all of you the future after talking to several gambling owners out there does seem to be VGO now I'm still very sketchy about VGO going forward. I'll link Richard Lewis's video down below about VGO. I think it's very obvious what the plans for VGO are. If you guys are not aware of that, OP skins will continue with VGO and other blockchain games out there. Other games who are actually going to use blockchain skins and that way they cannot get shut down for trading. So we'll see in the future how that goes, how VGO goes. I think the one undisclosed fact that we probably need to know in the future is who owns VGO. That's the overall overarching question right now. Many speculations do point towards OP skins or big gambling owners who have some sort of ownership of VGO, which would make perfect sense. The future of OP skins, though, is in their hands, and it does seem as of right now, Express Trade. I think many of us actually looked at Express Trade as the at the actual trading standpoint. I didn't really when I first saw Express Trade, I really thought it was going to be for the benefit of trading. It does seem though the ultimate goal of Express Trade was to bypass yet again the seven-day trade ban and help out gambling websites, therefore shooting OP skins in their own foot. And it does seem going forward they will no longer be using CSGO skins. And how that's going to affect the market, how it's going to affect the future of CSGO, I really just don't know. In big news, we did have Refresh Entertainment finally getting rid of their ties to Godsent. Now, I'm sure if you guys were not aware of this, it was actually a couple months ago. We had the Face It Major and Valve announced as well for all majors. The Face It Major included any major after that. You cannot have multiple ties to multiple teams out there. Now, firstly, it was actually Refresh cutting ties with Godsent. Godsent's entire roster now sent to Red Reserve. That was in very, very shocking news. And I have to be a little skeptical because we've had some past news about Red Reserve and their, their short stint with several CSGO teams out there. I am a bit worried for the future of this Godsent roster if they do not qualify for the major qualifier at the very least about their prolonged future. Uh, just given the, the history of Red Reserve and their, and their financial struggles with keeping CSGO teams, I'm a bit worried if they don't qualify for the major qualifier, how long that team will last. But anyway, good news for them as well as Refresh Entertainment. Now the only question though is we do think that Refresh Entertainment still has ties to other teams out there besides the Strauss. This includes Team Heroic. Heroic, obviously one of the more successful Danish teams out there right now, a rising team, has a great chance to make that major qualifier as well. 
well. So we're going to see if they actually have to cut ties with them and who's going to buy out Team Heroic if that does come to terms. As of right now, there's really no confirmations out there, but we do believe Refresh Entertainment has ties to both the Strauss and Heroic. They've already gotten rid of Godsent. Will Heroic be next? That is most likely. Now, also the big question out there as well, ES Force. They apparently have ties to Navi, SK, Virtus Pro. Are they next to actually reveal where these teams will go? Of course, SK Gaming could be leaving that roster organization sometime soon, but if they pick up a new team, it's still a connection to multiple teams out there. We're going to see what happens in the future with this. ES4 should be next. Refresh Entertainment still might have ties to multiple teams out there. We're going to wait and shortly see which teams they get rid of supposedly next. And also, huge Steam updates while I was gone, guys. Apparently, Steam pretty much trying to become the Discord. I'm actually going to link a great, great video down below if you guys have a few minutes. Banana Gaming has a great update video about the new Steam features. So, I currently just got this last night. I'm trying to work it out myself. I rather would prefer Discord right now because I'm used to it, but it seems like a great update. On top of that as well, Steam, I guess, uh, aka Valve, doing great things because they're finally expanding to China. This is going to be a great thing for Steam itself, and of course, that marketplace is going to be the next big question. What happens with Steam moving to China with that marketplace? Are we going to see a boom of skins out there besides just CSGO, PUBG, a, any other Steam skins out there? Is this going to help the market or hurt it? Most likely going to help it and put it in a positive direction. It's going to be cool to see how that actually affects the CSGO market in general because, as many of you guys are aware, when it comes to viewership, the Chinese market is the majority of CSGO viewership, if not a far out majority when it comes to random tournaments out there. A large spike in numbers comes from Chinese viewers, which is kind of an odd thing to see. So big moves coming from Steam, as well as that video link down below for all of you guys who are looking to use Steam as a new group feature for matchmaking or ESCA, whatever it might be. It looks like it's making a great stab at Discord. For me personally, though, I'm going to prefer Discord for the time being. But also, very lastly for today's episode of CSGO News, guys, two more stories for you. We do have Skadoodle coming out with Rush B Podcast. Now, this is actually a great podcast. If you're watching Rush B, I am so sorry I didn't get back to you on Twitter. They actually invited me a long time ago on their podcast, and I cannot find the DM anymore. So reach out if you guys want to. It's a great podcast. I'll link it down below. In that podcast itself, and actually linked by them, we do apparently Skadoodle talking about retirement once again. Now, he talked about this. I think it was actually just over a year ago as well. Apparently talking about it once again. Could Skadoodle be retiring from CSGO? It could possibly be true, and it's not really a, a highly unlikely thing to see, especially given the success of former Cloud9 teammates. Of course, Shroud being one of the most popular streamers in the world currently and still to this day, making great money away from the CSGO scene. And then we have nothing, doing the leisure tactic. You know, of course, him being a man with uh, you know great things in his life going on, besides the commentating or the analyst role, he now comes back to CSGO with Mouse Sports on the, on, the, on the side just for fun when he wants to. And it's hard to imagine a world where Skadoodle would not want that. You know, you can just casually come back to CSGO when he wants to, still make money on the side. So apparently Skadoodle in talks about retirement and it does seem you know when we had Shroud come out about this first time as well his teammates kind of revoked on him and said to, to take it back and it was shortly after that where people thought Shroud was joking or lying that he did actually retire from CSGO so we'll see sometime soon if Skadoodle meant it this time will he retire and very last and also in very notable news out there we do have the disbandment of one of the Chinese power teams out there that was start to start actually supposed to start a few months ago and that of course is Fierce Tigers now we covered this story many times in the past for those of you guys who are not aware of this this team known for actually having a person known as Leo cheat on their team as well as having other members actually match fix in the past and also possibly cheat as well. It was a very suspicious team until we also had even further evidence out there during the Asian minor for the face at major. This team magically qualified and actually they for the teams they actually faced off against apparently three of them did forfeit due to internet issues. Now it came down to their final match the grand final of the Asian minor the winner goes to the actual minor so a pretty big accomplishment for any team to come out of there when it goes to the Asian minor this team would have a great chance to actually go to the major qualifier out of that so it's it's a big thing for Vici and them to go through. Apparently against Vici Gaming though, Vici had their internet maliciously cut out. Now they actually accused Fierce Tigers of having some inside man or some inside source cut their internet out. It does actually go on to say as well, well if you guys covered that story or actually followed that story, the match was supposed to be replayed and all of a sudden Fierce Tigers who at first won that match by forfeit, that all their players were on vacation, they couldn't replay the match and it was actually faced at themselves saying, okay, Vici Gaming is going to win the minor and yes, Fierce Tigers, you will not, you'll be disqualified and not be allowed to go to the Asian minor because they did not replay the match. All in all, a very suspicious team out there, and apparently they've been caught. And again, it goes to show you guys the kind of karma out there in the CSGO world. If you do cheat, or if you're involved with cheaters or any other, I guess you could say uh, match fixes, whatever the, the, the sort might be, if you're going to be suspicious, karma's going to come and get you guys. Fierce Tigers has officially disbanded from the Chinese scene, and apparently that Chinese super team is now officially done. We're going to see where those players who were not cheating or maybe not involved go in the future. I do feel tremendously bad if they were not involved somehow, but I also so I like to stick to my little my little memo there. If you have a teammate who's actually cheating at this kind of level, you're likely to know about it. So if you guys don't, 
it's probably on you. As always, hope you guys all enjoy. I will see you all sometime soon. Life updates for you guys. I'll keep it very short. I found an apartment in Vegas. I'm now trying to get everything else figured out. Huge shouts to my parents for kind of, you know, helping me along the way. I have to do a lot of stuff still. I'm going to actually be on the road all day tomorrow, all day Sunday, driving all the way to Las Vegas, guys. 1,200 miles to go. Thank you all for following me on this journey. You guys are absolutely insane. I will see you all very soon. Enjoy the pre-recorded videos. I hope you guys really do. And I will see you all back here Wednesday with some more CS Good News and some permanent CS Good News. So, hope you guys all enjoy. My name is Jim Like You. I will see you all then. Goodbye, guys.